And thank you so much for coming. Over to you guys. Hello, everyone. Hi. Happy Halloween. Ooh. We're excited to get crafty with you all today. I'm Dennis. I'm Andrew. We're known as the Crafty Lumberjacks. If you're just joining us for the first time, hello, welcome. If you're here uh, and you've seen us before, nice to see you yes. again. I'm going to be in the chat if you have any questions. And also Meg from Works um, is going to be in the chat. If you have any questions about the Maker X, uh, if a little bit about us, uh, we've been doing this full time for about four years, right? Uh, right, four years, five yeah, years. Yeah, four years full time. We've been we started our blog uh, what like almost eight nine yeah. years ago. Wow, we met ten years ago on the national tour of Fiddler on the Roof. We were both actors. We traveled all of the United States and Canada. Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of people from Utah, Ohio, oh. Ohio, Washington. We've been there. We performed at your at your big theaters where traveling shows come in. So it's so nice to see everybody from all around the country here. Yes, and as you can see, we love Halloween. This really is our favorite time of year. You have Christmas creeping up and you get to be as creepy as possible right now. So it <laughs> yes. makes us very happy. So uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Maker X tools and also creating a uh, skull planter using one of these plastic skulls that you can purchase at Michael's. Like Felicia said, this video will be um, able to be viewed about 24 hours, 48 hours after the class on the Michaels YouTube channel. If you miss anything, if you want to revisit it, or if you're not crafting with us today, but you want to craft later, it will be there for you. Also, anytime you make something from Michaels of our projects, of works projects, use the hashtag make it with Michaels just so that we can all see it. Yeah, and tag us. Did you say tag us? No. And tag us too. We're on Instagram, <laughs> Crafty Lumberjacks, pretty much any social media platform. Crafty Lumberjacks. Yes, and actually, if you joined us last week, we did a class all about the Maker X. The Maker X is a revolutionary craft crafting tool system that we've been using for about the last year, yes. um, and we're obsessed. And we're gonna be using a lot of those tools today to make our skull. Yeah, actually, we're, we're kind of in a really unique position. We've been working with Works Tools and with the Maker X specifically for just over a year now. So we've made over 30 projects using the tools. So if you have any questions about that, let us know. And of course, like we said, if we don't know the answer, like more technical stuff, Meg is here to answer all of those or share links or whatever. Yes. Yeah, so if you're new to the Maker X, it is a crafting system tool that does not require a plug. Mm -hmm. um, this is it. Every tool that's used with the Maker X uh, works with this main hub here. Um, you can see it has a little cord and the cord plugs into the tools, yes. uh, but it is all battery operated. Yes, and this is the 20 volt power share battery. It's a lithium battery. So you charge it and you're ready to go. And the great thing is if you have other works uh, tools that also have the power share line, you can use this. So we have a drill that has it. We have a fan that has it, a vacuum that has it. Yes, so my we're... mom, uh, she's on Long Island. She has a leaf blower, yes. a, uh, a snow pusher, uh, all kinds of, oh, her, her hedger, what are yeah, they called? Yeah, hedge clippers. Hedge clippers, yes, yeah, they yeah. all use the same battery. Yeah, so it's really great. So we have a handful of these batteries. We all, They're always charged and ready to go. And we live in a one bedroom apartment. I mean, what you see here is- Pretty much it. The majority <laughs> of it. And the rest belongs to our cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So we're always crafting in different spots. We're crafting by the window to get the best lighting to record. We're crafting out in the alley because uh, we live in Astoria, Queens. So, you know, we, we're crafting all over. And this has really given us the, the power to go wherever we need to go to craft. So it's really handy. Yes. So to plug it in, all you do is you just uh, slide in the battery just like this. You hear that click, that's how you know it's ready. Yes, and the coolest thing about the Maker X, which I'm sure you all know now, is that it is sold on michaels.com. Yes. Uh, you know, so you can find the hub there and they have about five accessories now. Um, and But the coolest thing about it is that they keep growing. So they've added a food safe airbrush. They've yes. added a hot glue gun. They've added their famous zip snips oh. um, and it just keeps growing and expanding, which is so cool because we're obsessed. Yeah, and this also makes a really great gift if you have someone in your family that you're always struggling to find like a gift for, I know I always do, start them off with something and then every year you can keep adding tools to yes, it. Yes, really I love is. that and then you don't have to think about it. Yeah, that's so like I'm just getting them another tool. <laughs> But today we are going to be making our skull planter really fun using our Maker X tools. We're going to be using the rotary tool, uh, the glue gun, which Meg, maybe you can clarify if they can get the glue gun 
currently or if that's yes. coming out later this month or whenever. And our favorite, the airbrush right here, which is so cool. It's so unique. Um, and it's actually really inexpensive compared to other airbrushes. And this really takes everything over the top. Yes, and we're also gonna be using our heat gun today um, just to kind of uh, speed up the, the paint drying process. We use this for a handful of different, um, you know, projects, but we also use it to dry paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that versatile. Yes, so I don't know if we should jump right into it. Felicia, if you don't mind switching the, the cameras. Awesome, yes. Also, I want to say that the Maker X now is uh, more portable than ever because it has this little clip which you can put on your little apron or your belt mm -hmm. so you can craft on the go. And they also have a USB port. Yeah, this is great because they just came out with a little light. So if you're working in the dark or you're working with something really detailed, I know like my eyes, I need as much light as possible to see the teeniest little things. So that really will help really get all those details perfect. Yes. So we're gonna start uh, by creating a, uh, a hole. We're gonna give our little plastic skull here a lobotomy using our rotary tool. And this has the uh, saw attachment. Yep. Um, you know, the rotary tool has a handful of different attachments. Um, I think it's over 40 different attachments it comes with, which is really a great tool to start with if you're a hobbyist and you want a tool that's really versatile. The rotary tool is really great for that. Yes, and it's so easy. Do you wanna? Yeah, I'll show you how easy it is just to swap out the tool. I'll just take this one off. It has a lock button right here. And all you have to do is push it, which releases the lock. And then you just twist this black, the black nozzle right on top, and then you pull it out. So to put it in, I'm just pushing the lock button and then it'll open up the hole here. And then I'm twisting the hole shut just like that. And you just wanna make sure it's nice and secure, which it is. Yes, great. So uh, like we said, everything plugs into the main hub here. I'm actually gonna bring the camera around. Is that okay? Okay, yes. I think it's hard for me to like... kind of understand where I'm at. Oh, gosh, no, just it. do it from there. Do it to... no, no, do no, it from no. there. Yes, yes. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Oh gosh. Behind the scenes, behind the scenes drama. Okay, yeah. So, oh, let Felicia fix it for us. Thank uh, you. Thanks, so Felicia. we're gonna do the top down, but. All right. Okay, so really simple. All the tools have the three um, holes in the back there. You just match up the, the, the um, cable here into the tool. Yeah, so it makes it really easy when you're switching out tools as you go. It really and does. And I'm just gonna show you how much force this has. So this is the main on button here, and then they have a little control um, yeah. rotary. Um, a dial. <laughs> a dial, yeah, <laughs> sorry. I'm having trouble with words today. Um, you know, where you can kind of advance or slow down the speed. So this is the lowest speed here. And you can hear it's nice and soft. Yep. And it can go all the way up, depending on which type of material you're working with. Wow. Yes. So in the tradition of Halloween, we are going to give our skull a lobotomy. Uh, we're gonna start just with the skull here and then I'm gonna use a, a piece of tape. Yeah, anything round you have just to draw out a circle is great. You could always freehand it. Really, the great thing about Halloween is the creepier, the more uh, unperfect, the, all the imperfections really lend to the creepiness. Yes, you get away with a lot of stuff to Definitely. Halloween, you know? Uh, so, and that's just gonna give me a guide as to where to cut. But because we have a cat here and it can be a little messy, uh, we actually already started one. Yeah, and we actually started this outside. That's the great thing about the tool, again, that you can really travel with it. So when we work with stuff that, uh, you know, we're worried that it's gonna like create like shards of plastic or anything like or that. Or get messy. Or get messy. We just take it right outside. It makes cleanup so easy. Yes, and of course, always safety first. We recommend wearing gloves and goggles, depending on what you're working with. Totally. But I'm just gonna finish this guy's uh, head off and just kind of cut off there. You can also use works and the Maker X has a um, wood burning tool and a metal tool. Yeah. Where we actually, before we use the rotary tool, we actually use that to just wood burn and, and burn the plastic here to remove the top of the skull. Yep. But today I'm just gonna use the drill, uh, excuse me, the rotary tool. And you can see how easy it is to Definitely. just cut through. I mean, as you can see, that just took no easy time breezy. at all. And it looks really great. And it was just so easy. And the 
the the saw itself can cut through um, like balsa wood and other materials that aren't too thick, which is really, really great. All right. All right. So that's our first step for our skull planter. Yeah. So as you can assume, we're going to be putting our plant in here, our flowers today actually we're using. So it's just a really nice, um, you know, it just adds just like this really nice uh, purpose for the skull. But you actually could do this whole project as is and not even cut it. It could just be a whimsical skull. Yeah, right you now. can add some moss, some flowers, glue it on. Okay, so now we are going to airbrush onto our skull yes. and Andrew's gonna take over. And Felicia, maybe we could switch over to the other camera just so we can uh, talk. Hi. Oh, she's on it, I, I love know. it. Thank you. Um, so this is the airbrush and this is what really caught our eye when we were learning about the Maker X was this tool specifically because it's something we had not seen before. Airbrushes are really, really expensive. And this one is very inexpensive and the quality is really, really high. So it's it's a win-win. It comes with two different parts. I mean, the, this part itself has a lot of parts inside, but the tool itself, it's really easy to connect. All you wanna do is just put the top to the bottom. And this is a compressor. So all the air is gonna come from here and out here with the paint. You put the paint in right here and then the, the airbrush sprays it right out. And what makes an airbrush an airbrush, it's almost like spray paint, but to the teeniest, like finest detail. So you're really gonna get, you can, you can do that. Okay, sorry. He's like being like- I'm like trying to be quiet to clean up. It's fine. Um, so you really get these like really soft brushed lines, which if you try to stencil, you're not gonna get that. If you try to use acrylic paint with a brush, you're not gonna get that. If you use spray paint, it's gonna be too big. So really this adds this shadowing detail, which you're gonna see on this skull, which is really, really wonderful. And like we said, now, now they have not just a airbrush for crafting, they have a food safe airbrush that you can use in the kitchen. Yes. So for all your baking needs, if you're a cake designer, if you like to make uh, cupcakes or things for your kids when they have parties. Yes, even if you don't like to bake, buy, this is actually our tip, buy pre-made stuff box. and yes. then just decorate But then it. add your own little spin. Yes. You know, nobody will know. I'm actually going to grab some more parchment paper. Oh, okay. I forgot. How's everybody doing? Does Michaels have the link? Yes, they said the glue gun is coming soon. Amazing. So when you're working with the airbrush, you do want to make sure that your surface is covered because it's you're not going to really see the paint, but it'll come out. So just make sure that your surface is pretty well covered. We have a tip when we're working inside, sometimes we like to take a box and do it in a box, but today we're gonna do it right on the table. Do you have the paint? I do have the paint. So, so we're gonna be working with two different paints today. We're gonna to be using a magenta and a teal. Now you can use whatever color you would like. And yes, the in, thing is you you do need um, airbrush paint, yes. which is essentially, and actually you can make your own airbrush paint, yes. which is acrylic paint. And water. And water. It's just a thinner paint consistency. Yeah, and when you're working with the food safe airbrush, if you're working with food, don't use this type of paint. You can <laughs> well, use, no. You can use uh, food coloring, which actually works really, really well. Yeah, so. so before I start, I'm going to plug in the airbrush. And it's the same thing as Dennis said, you have your three prongs here, you just line it up and then put it in and we're set to go. Now here we have where you fill the paint. Now you don't wanna fill it all the way to the top. What you wanna do is fill it about a third way and no higher, just because it's better to refill than to have too much and you don't want it to uh, bubble over or you know, also don't wanna waste the paint. You'll see, I mean, we've had this for over a year. You really get a lot from these paints. You think, oh, they're so teeny, but they last a they long, last long, long, last, long yes. time. Which color are you starting I'm with? I'm actually gonna start with the magenta okay. today. But we always do say, if you're working with multiple colors, it's best to start with light to dark. But the way, the technique for the skull today, we're actually gonna start dark to light, just because I wanna focus on these, um, these features, making sure they're nice and dark before I highlight it with the teal. Yes. So actually, while I'm holding this up, so. When I'm looking at the skull, I'm trying to think, how am I gonna, how am I gonna paint this? You could paint the whole thing one color. It would look really nice, monochromatic. But what, with an airbrush, it's really great because you can really highlight those details. So when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at like the eye sockets. I'm looking at uh, this nose socket. 
Would you call that a no-sock? Yeah, see, know. we're all this on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at uh, these cheekbones. I'm looking at the areas that I want to highlight. And the great thing about these skulls that Michaels has, they already come with a slight variation, but we just want to magnify it and really make it as whimsical as possible. Yeah. So these are the areas I'm going to focus on today. All right, let's get that airbrush going. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so do you want to be behind there? Sure. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to make sure that my airbrush paint is nice and shaken. And then I'm going to add it to the cup. And like Andrew said, you only need a little bit, about yeah. a third way into the paint reservoir there. Yes. And then the cap just uh, pops right on. You don't have to twist it or anything. Nope. You just pop it right on. All right, and then... I'm going to. Yes, what we like to do is kind of check um, the stream on a piece of paper. Yeah, it's a really good idea to, before you tackle your project, to really just check it. So I'm going to turn it on. And for the airbrush, the dial actually doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter where the setting is. The airbrush will do a consistent flow no matter what. So I'm just going to turn it on. Do you hear that little hum? It's so quiet. And then I'm just going to pull back. Look at that and test it and test it now it's, it's just we're getting little... a lot of your hand oh there we go so oh yeah i think i wanted a little thicker so i'm going to just twist the nozzle a little bit and the back yeah the back nozzles here will kind of a control and adjust um if it's a wide uh spray or a narrower spray yep, so it kind of controls what's coming out of the front so i'm even going to do a little bit more and when you start playing with the airbrush, you really get a sense of how it is. That's looking really nice. Yes. Wow. All right, so I think it's time to start working on our skull. So I'm gonna do the best so my hand doesn't um, block it, Dennis, but you yes. just can't move it. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, you wanna move it? No, 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 you're fine. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the eyes. Like I said, I want them to be nice and dark. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to just fill these eye sockets with this magenta. Look at that. Beautiful. And I'm taking care of these dark spots first before I move on to the highlights. So I just wanna kind of get all this. And I think sometimes it's easier to move what you're working on than to actually move the tool itself. There we go. Now I'm gonna do just like a little bit in the nose. And actually, I think it's a little um, thin still. Yes, typically right. we recommend spraying about six uh, inches away. But because we're trying to keep it condensed, we don't have it in a box and we're working on a table. Andrew's doing it a little closer than we normally recommend. Uh, but we just, of course, want you to see what's happening. Yeah, totally. And as you can see, like this doesn't look like acrylic paint. Like, look how wonderful that already looks. This looks really cool. Look at that shading. So I'm actually even going to go farther just so you can like see how cool this is. Yeah, you really just go more gradual and you can really just get a sense of, oh, wow, this, I mean, it's really so different from them just using paint. Yes, I saw something come up in the chat that they said, be sure to practice with it first. Yeah. You really want to, we've been using the airbrush now for over a year, like Andrew said. Yes. So we're kind of pros. I, Would you say we're airbrush I don't know specialists? About, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yes, but um, of course, before ever airbrushing or even cutting or anything like you want to practice, you want to work with the tools, you want to familiarize yourself with the tools because, you know, uh, supplies can be expensive and yes. they add up and you don't want to do something and mess up and then you have to go back and buy it, you know. Um, so yes, it's always good to practice with the tool first. So even when Andrew was practicing on the piece of paper, that's just to get a feel of, you know, the stream and also to kind of just get everything working, get his hand kind of readjusted with, okay, I'm going to hold it like this. Yeah, definitely. Actually, one of our first uh, projects with the airbrush that we ever did was this galaxy pumpkin. And working on a faux pumpkin was actually really helpful just because it's such a big plane. Um, and it was actually a really good learning uh, lesson. All right. What do you, you know, like Alana is? said, you live, you learn. You live, you, you learn. learn. Yes. All right. I think that looks pretty good. What do That's you think? Good. Yeah. Anything else? No, I think that looks great. Maybe I'm going to do just a little. Maybe his teeth. Oh. Little spritz will do you. Oh, we got another go. chin a little. All right. 
So I'm gonna turn off the airbrush and I'm gonna check how much paint is in the reservoir. Hmm, it looks like a lot of paint. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna dump this out in the sink before switching to the other paint color. But if this reservoir was just as it is, I would probably just add the paint to it and just let it um, run out run out on the piece of paper. Yeah, which you'll essentially do, but everybody hold, please. We need to get a sink that's closer to our craft table. Yes, yes. I can give you a quick uh, a tour of our little apartment here if you'd like while we wait. It's a little messy, but there's our yarn spider webs, our Halloween tree. You see, we, we do it up for Halloween. We do, we do. All right. All right, so now I'm gonna do the next color. And again, we just wanna make sure that we shake it really, really well, just so there's no lumps or anything that can get stuck in the airbrush. Because again, uh, the airbrush, this little hole right here is so thin and fine that it really does not take a lot of paint. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add it in. Yep. So you can already see he has some of that uh, uh, magenta paint in there and he's gonna let it run out on the paper yeah. before kind of adding it to the skull. And for this craft, I'm really not too worried about the colors mixing because I chose two colors that mix well. And I like that it kind of has a different tone to it. So it's gonna change while I work. What do you think of that? I love it. All right. Very beautiful. So now I'm going, you mean scary. <laughs> yes, very scary. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to just add highlights. So I'm not going to do as much as I did last time. So I'm just press this place. A little dab will do, yeah. A little dab. And you can see it just changes everything completely. Yeah, Look so it that. looks really good. Wow. So I'm going to just kind of continue. I do a little on the teeth, on the chinny chin. And I'm going to do it around where we cut. You know, I'm really, you know, all of our crafts, and I'm sure these videos on Michael's, these are just aimed to ins inspire. You know, we want you to um, replicate, but also kind of just get inspired by these projects and make it your own. Yeah. Match it to fit your aesthetic, match it to fit your home decor. Definitely. Do you see any other areas I need? I think no, that looks I think that pretty looks great. good. Wow. All right. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna bring this over to the kitchen quickly. Yes, and I'll be working on eyes in a bit. Okay. So now our skeleton needs eyes. What we're using for the eyes, our uh, wooden beads. And these are just wooden beads that we found in the, um, the bead and jewelry section at Michael's. They're wooden. And we thought they're perfect for our skeleton eyes here because they fit right in. But we want to make them look Halloween. -y. So actually, we already, we spray, uh, sorry, we didn't spray paint. We airbrush our wooden beads here, just white so that they, um, you know, look like white eyes. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, we just, it was so easy. A good tip is to use a, um, to use a skewer while you're doing it, just so you can hold on to it. But now we're just gonna add some details with some acrylic paint. Sorry, I'm just so, trying to get a better camera view. No, thank you. Good. Yeah, I think that looks really good. Okay. So I'm just going to use a little bit of acrylic paint. I'm just going to pour it right into this dish and use a fine brush. Now we are, especially with Halloween, we think that adding eyes to any type of skeleton, whether it's like a little skeleton rat or whatever is like the best thing you can do to really give it life. So we do this to so many of our, our little skeletons that we already have. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the little people with a little black paint. And I'm just going to go around. And Dennis said, yes, we found these in the bead section. We are big fans of that bead section and we do not make jewelry, but we find so many things to do with beads and all those charms that they have. So I'm just going around. And just take your time with this. This is the part that, you know, you don't want to rush too much. 
There we go. How do you think that looks? That looks great. Thank you. So, you know, and if you have someone with you, make sure that you're they're giving you the support. Yes, positive feedback. Yes, that's what I'm always looking for. All right, so you see that looks pretty good. Now here's where the heat gun comes in. I'm actually just going to hit it with the heat gun just real quick so it uh, doesn't blend with the teal color. Let's see, so I'm just plugging the two. Oh, thank Hi. you, <laughs> Felicia. So I'm just uh, plugging in the heat gun just like this. Same thing, I'm just gonna turn it on. For the heat gun, the dial actually does not matter either. It's gonna give you a consistent heat of, I think 500 degrees Fahrenheit and it has a nice speed when you're using this, hold it about six inches away from it or even further, just so you know it doesn't burn your fingers. And wave in like a consistent, even motion. Yeah, so I'm gonna turn it on. And I'm just gonna dry it. Dry it up a little bit. We love a tool that gives you multi-purpose. That's what we're always looking for, you know, so this is always so helpful. And already it's like super dry. I'm keeping my eyes on you. Oh, <laughs> uh, do you want to be, do you want to make this other one or you think? Eh, uh, it's fine. Sure. Oh, so now I'm going to just paint the other one. I guess Felicia will go back down here just so everyone can see. And I'm just going around. Yep. This will just give it more dimension, more life. But it really already looks like a, like an eye. It does. Aye, aye, aye. All right. Very cute. No, very creepy, Dennis. Oh, sorry. Very I know I always say cute is my word about everything. I know. And that's it could okay. be the most hideous thing. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> you guys are opening my mind to new concepts. Yes, those are cool. Thank you. All right. So actually, Felicia, we can keep the, uh, the camera here. I'm just going to take the heat gun to it. And this is great too, because when I'm working, I, I always feel like I'm on, not a time crunch, but I feel like my creativity, it's like, I want to get this done while I have it in my mind, you know? So I don't like to wait around for paint to dry. <laughs> oh, I see. Opening my eyes. That was a good one. That was good. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. You know, we're really going to give them pumpkin to talk about with this craft. Ah. Not a skull pun, but a pumpkin pun. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take a skull pun. All right, that looks actually pretty oh, good. Thank you, Lana. So love your videos. Keep them coming. Love you all. That's so sweet. Aww. Thank you. Um, while Andrew works on the other eye, I'm going to show you a technique that we like to do with our, with our beady little eyes here. Um, we want to make them bloodshot. Um, so for that, I'm going to be using embroidery thread or embroidery floss. People call it two different things. You call it what you want. I call it embroidery thread. I do too, but everyone seems to say floss. Yes, and a little bit of craft glue. And what we're going to do is just cut a little piece. And I'm going to take my little ends here and just spread them out, spread them out, just so it looks like a little spider. Ooh or we have little pieces kind of extended. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, put some of the craft glue on the bead here. Oh, and I have a little, if you want- Oh, a little it, ramekin. Right here, it's right here. Oh, okay, sorry. We love a good ramekin, you know? Yes. Now I'm sure you understand that this is for like the bloodshot- eye. Eyeball, yes. yes. Yeah, I said that. Oh, you did, okay. I can't, I can't multitask very well. Is this, um, can I use this? You can, yeah, that's actually. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of my craft glue. And of course you can use, you know, craft glue or you can use Mod Podge if you have it at home and just kind of go a little bit with the glue here around. Oh, it's a little warm. Oh. From the heat gun. Oh, yes, yes. And then I'm just gonna take my uh, pulled apart embroidery thread here and just place it around the eye. And it's going to give us a nice bloodshot effect. Yes. And this does take a little bit of time. It's one of those details that, you know, you kind of have to, you know, you don't want to rush it as you go, but these teeny little threads really add so much detail. It's, it really takes it uh, to the next level. And as you can see, Dennis has kept his string really long. And that's, we're going to show you why 
in just a couple of minutes. Yes, and again, I didn't really force the thread to go. Can you kind of see that? I'm trying to. Yeah. That looks oh wait, great. which way? I know. Oh gosh. Gonna, oh, there it's we go. Always, there we go. I kind of just allowed the thread to do its own little thing. Uh -huh. Um, you know, on the glue because of course it's too hard to control. Yep. Um, if anybody has any questions about this project or any other project, let us know if you, you know, I know this is a little hard to see, huh? hard to see, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, we're always happy to go over something or yeah, answer any of your questions. Time. I'm doing my best to follow in the chat as well. Um, so again, just applying a little more craft glue there. And then I'm just going to let the kind of thread do its thing. And you can oh, kind of wow. see it looks a little bloodshot, right? It looks really bloodshot. It's really cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go over to read the questions while you do that. Look at me. I don't I don't think there's any questions. You're right. There's no questions. It's embarrassing. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna complete this and keep on going here with my little bloodshot. I want to know if you're if you're watching, do you decorate and craft for Halloween specifically? Is it a holiday that you look forward to? Or are you more of like a fall crafter? Or do you put all your energy into the holidays? I feel like it's a lot to do all of them, but it's super fun. Yes, and then like Andrew said, I'm going to have a long string here because we're actually going to glue these in like his eyes are falling out. <laughs> yes, we have a, a sick and twisted sense of humor. But we like to keep it whimsical and light. That's yeah, and just big pops fun. of color. Like, I don't know if on camera, if this looks red or pink, but in real life, it's really pink. It's like a bright, like vibrant pink. So if this doesn't look gory. It looks like whimsical. <laughs> Patty said, I think your jokes are going over his head. <laughs> uh, Lana Banana said, I go all out for Christmas. Yes, Trevor. Yes, love Halloween. It's my favorite. Oh my Do crafts and decorate. You're our people, Trevor. Lana and everybody else, when do you start decorating for uh, Christmas? October 31st. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, since we're on the subject of Christmas, we're doing another class with Works Tools and the Maker X on November 19th. We're going to be getting crafty for Christmas. Uh, we're going to make an adorable, large wood round snowman uh, or snow person, excuse me. Sorry, you didn't try this. Did you? I didn't try that one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, you, can, okay. you can just focus on you're this right. one. You're right. I was going to say, Dennis, that segment was so, or that segue was so good. Thank you. That I'm like, really what be on, on the view? Uh -huh. You know, I, I just got all the, all the segues. Yes. And I'm just going to keep adding, adding. So yeah, as you can see, and I show you here as with, you can as you can see, see uh, there is all this extra um, embroidery floss and what we're actually going to do is we're going to add a little bit of glue to it just to stiffen it up just because we don't want it to be too um, we, we want it to be more stiff than loosey-goosey so I'm actually just going to add a little should bit that be our skeleton name loosey-goosey loosey-goosey the planter <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, of craft glue to it. And I think, you know, I'm a fingers type of guy. I like to work with my fingers when I do it. So I'm actually just going to take it and put it right on the floss itself. Yes, yeah, Crabby said, I just looked at Michael's on the Maker X kits come with ton of accessories straight out of the box. Yes, cutting, grinding, even yeah. polishing a lot of kits. That's awesome. Yes, they have everything there to make your crafting as easy and breezy as it can possibly be. Ooh. All right. A week before Thanksgiving, we decorate an entire yard. You can see it blocks away. Oh, wow. I love that. That's really special. Our tree is up all year long. It's decorated according to different seasons. We love to celebrate everything. Oh. I love that, Patty. Hi. Oh, and Felicia just shared the link to our next class where you can sign up. Please join us then. We always love hanging Thank out you, and just Felicia. creating with yeah. you all. So I'm going to just show like how you then take this long uh, embroidery floss. We're actually just going to take it now. Again, I kind of said I like working with my fingers. Uh, sometimes I just find it so much easier. So I'm just adding the uh, the glue right to the end of the floss, and I'm just going to twist the um, the floss into itself. 
just to bunch it up because this is how we're going to glue it to the skull directly. So we're going to add hot glue to the end of this once it's all dry. So I'm just going to bunch it up just so the glue has something to adhere to and also that um, it, it actually gives it a nice effect when you actually see the skull itself. So for the two, we're going to bunch one up really close. So we have one that just popping or that's like in his skull. And then the other one, we're going to let hang. So you well, can kind of it's see Lucy it. and her pronouns are her. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. So you're saying him, but it's okay. Lucy Goosey. Yes, yes. Sorry, Lucy Goosey. So <laughs> Lucy, we have your eyes already done right over here. We made these. <laughs> yes, ahead of time. So you don't have to watch us. I'm sorry, you, we made these ahead of time. Hey, oh. Um, so you can see, so we, you, as you can see, we have one of her eyes just like this. As you can also see, it's nice and stiff just from the glue. And then we have one that's really close. So now we're going to adhere them to the eyes. But before we do that, we just wanna check that this paint is dry because when you're using a glue gun, you wanna make sure that all your surfaces are dry before you go. And it is looks it, pretty dry. Yeah, it, it looks pretty, pretty quickly, good. Right? Yeah, it looks great. All right, actually, so now, oh. I was gonna say, I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm just gonna hit it. You don't wanna do it too long because the paint will chip. It'll like pop up and chip, but just giving it a little heat just to make sure it's nice and dry. Yes. All right, we're good. Sophie said, those look good and gruesome. Yes. Oh, and goodness. now for this, to glue in our eyeballs, we are going to use the Maker X uh, glue gun which again, I don't know if that's coming. It's there. It's Meg, been in maybe. the chat. She was kind of saying, oh, okay, okay. I can't remember. Yeah, same thing. They have the three um, holes in the back there. You just line up your uh, uh, main hub, plug it in. And now this tool is a little different where it's, um, you have to turn on the Maker X on here. And then there's actually an on and off switch on the glue gun. Um, so you just turn on the main hub, the light will turn orange. And then you press and hold this down for about three seconds. It will turn orange. And the coolest thing about this is that this is a quick heat up glue gun. It takes less than 25 seconds to heat up and then you're ready to go. You load the glue gun in the back, just like a regular glue gun. And then they have the precision controller here. It's like a little clicker that releases the glue gun. So this is great for really um, detailed up close, um, uh, what, what is the yeah, word like I'm looking? Fine, like spots. You know? Yes, yes. I'm sure everyone knows that the, 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 you know, when it's really annoying when you're trying to just do a little bit of glue on something and then of course you get this big mound of glue. I was also going to say this, you said it takes what, 20, 25, 25 seconds, seconds which is so great because I feel like also that you know that it's ready, which a lot of glue guns that you do not know if it's hot or not. So you're spending time like checking it every five minutes and that it's just so quick is really a game changer. Yes, I and Meg actually guns. mentioned that um, you hold it like a pencil. And I love that uh, with all these tools. And that's always our main tip about, look, so it's green. I was and I accidentally pressed it off. <laughs> so, so, but yes, it heats up right away. And um, we always recommend that with any of the works tools, I'm sorry, the Maker X tools, we always recommend hold it like a pencil. Yes. It's really easy to control. And look, and you see the glue is already coming out. Easy breezy. Yes. So we're just gonna glue in our little um, gruesome eyes. I love that word. I don't use that word enough. And just a little dab of glue right there. And I'm just gonna hold his, uh, sorry, Lucy's eye in place till yeah. it's. She looks thrilled. <laughs> really? Ooh. I know she said, but I, I just think it's so cool because this is one of the crafts that you really see um, taking on a new life. You get yeah. to see it develop I mean, and kind just, of- Even just having this one eye. I mean, she is- One-eyed Lucy. She's a whole new person. <laughs> yes. And then I'm just gonna do this eye here. And this is the one that's kind of popping out, falling off. And you don't have to do that, but we always just like to play with, you know, the weirder, the better this time of year. And then you just wanna make sure that when you do it, you can kind of like, twist it so it can be yeah, seen. Yeah, adjust. You want it to be seen, of yeah. course. She's having a, she's having a hard day. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> We're having a hard two years. Uh, oh yes. my gosh. Oh and my as, gosh, I just I want that. to show like the detail of bunching up you, the embroidery floss. You can see why it really just adds this, um, this really nice detail even behind it you can also see it. So it's, we're not just putting beads in for eyes, we're layering all these details in just like how we layered on the paint with our airbrush. 
my gosh, she looks really good. Yes, work said, love the Maker X glue gun yeah. attachment because you aren't tied to a close, or excuse me, because you aren't tied to having to be close to an outlet too. Yes, and that's again for our space. Yeah. It's so frustrating because, um, well, we're in Queens, we're in a pre-war building, so we barely have any outlets to begin with, <laughs> and they are in the worst possible places around our apartment. So the Maker X makes it so easy, like Andrew said, because we can just craft Definitely. anywhere. Yes. Uh, Felicia, if you want to flip the camera just for a couple minutes so we can just talk about our next step. Yes, we're actually going to kind of gather. Sure, gather, clean. He's going to do it all. Um, so I have no choice. <laughs> So there's a lot of different options you can do with Lucy. You could uh, use a real potted plant. We did that a couple of years ago when we made this originally. We just, we found a plant that just fit right in. I think it was a pothos and it just sat in here. You could also use, of course, Michael's has so many faux um, succulents and different types of plants too. They have some really great Halloween themed plants this year. Um, or you could also, what we're gonna do today is we're going to take a piece of floral foam that we found at Michael's. This is the one that you soak in water and then you can add uh, living things to it. Living things to living it. Things. Living things to it. So we cut down a piece of floral foam to size. I'm just gonna stick it right in. And we found these really nice um, mums, just like right on the corner over here. If you have a garden, that's even better. You can do that. But now what we're gonna do, and I guess Felicia, you can go back to the other top down. Thank you. Um, now we're just going to stick them in. Now I'll admit, I'm really not the best uh, flower arranger. Are you? No. I knew that answer. By the way. I, <laughs> I know asked. you set me up for failure. I well, I, I kind of said I'm not, but you know, <laughs> I think a good tip is you want to start with like the tallest first and then kind of go out. I'm sure there's some really wonderful flower arrangers out there. And yes, and like actually, if you have a tip about arranging flowers, let us know <laughs> uh, because it, it, it's a skill we do not have. Yeah, so if you're like, this is wrong, don't tell us that, but uh, you know, give us <laughs> Kindly a Kindly tell us. And of course you can cut these down or have it really, uh, you know, large, yeah. like a March Simpson kind of look. Oh my gosh, yes. Michael said, I have to juggle my electric power tool, no, Fun. No fun at all. Attaching some floral picks would help a lot. Yes. Oh, floral picks. Yes, that's Wait, smart. what's a floral pick? It's kind of almost like a, a skewer, almost. Like oh, a wooden stake. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did I make these too high? I don't know. Actually, this was like a centerpiece, though. How fun would this be for like a really fun uh, Halloween party or even a dinner if you're keeping it a little more low key this year? Like we are, we're definitely going on the, sh on the smaller side. Thank you. Uh, of just kind of, you know, having a few people over instead of, you know, our normal. And when he says family. that, he means our cat. So yes. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know. And let me just tell you, our cat will not appreciate this, all this extra work we're doing, but that's okay. Um, but just adding this floral element to the skull really also does just take it, you know, like I said before, we do not like gruesome things. So we're not looking for you know, gore. We're looking for, you we know. like whimsy. Whimsy. Gruesome whimsy. And we're just kind of sticking these in here. And I like what Andrew said earlier, like you don't even need uh, the floral foam. You can just get a, a pot. Yeah. You definitely. know, a plant that's already in a pot and just pop it right in. <laughs> Patty said, you're sending this to me, right? Actually, this <laughs> is our third one I think that we've made. We probably could send this to I you. I know, every time I think we just make it a we'll little- We'll autograph more. it. <laughs> I would spray the flowers orange and black. Oh, Ooh, I like that. Oh my Classic gosh, that is such Halloween. a great Actually, idea. a main theme in our apartment this year is orange and black. Uh, usually we go a purple kind of route, which you yes. can tell by the skull. Uh, but this year we were feeling orange and black. So our tree is black with orange lights and uh, our garland behind us is black with orange lights. Yeah, that you know, that's such a good idea. I never thought to spray the flowers themselves uh -huh, with yes, the airbrush. Yeah. That would be really, really beautiful. All right. You know, it'd be cool too. Michael's also has um, a whole bunch of these skulls um, with different sizes. You can actually, uh, you know, if you're doing a trick or treater, we don't have trick or treaters here at our home, but like making one of these that were huge oh, and kind of yeah. setting it outside with candy would be really fun for the kids. 
I love that idea. Sophie loves purple and neon green. Oh, yeah. that's a fun color combo. Um, I guess Felicia, you go back to the other camera. Let's see how she looks. <clears throat> oh, Lucy Goosey. I mean, Lucy Goosey losing her eyes. <laughs> so uh, cute. Oh, gorgeous. Um, I don't know. Tell us what you think in the comments. I'm actually, I mean, Dennis said, this is the third time we've made this project. And I feel like every time we do it, I'm always like, oh, and I, I think it's really all about like the shading and the eyes. Like it's yes, really it about gave, those gave it a whole new life. Thanks. Wow. I want to show you another project that we made with our Maker X recently. Oh, I'm intrigued. <laughs> These oh. are the um, these are the uh, LED candles that you can get at yes. Michaels. Yeah, yeah, we got these on sale at Michaels, and they were just standard LED candles. They actually were flat on the top, and we took the heat gun to them. And uh, well, like, first we took our rotary cutter, that's true. and we just kind of the same thing like we did with our skull, cut these down to just make it a little uh, you know <laughs> look worn and decrepit. And then we added um, the heat gun to kind of melt it down a little. We also added, this is glue, hot yep. glue on the base and also kind of these drippings here. It's all hot glue that we added. And then of course we sprayed it with our airbrush. And we should probably preface that this is a wax candle. It's a wax, wax candle. LED candle, um, but that's a really fun project. We actually just finished that one, I think yesterday. Um, but I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with her. I love her. Uh, Who needed it, Patty? Maybe we should send it, send it to Patty. Patty said, she is awesome. Trevor, love it. I feel like she would tell good jokes. Yes, <laughs> I think so. Love it. The Adams Family. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we still have a few more minutes here. If you have any questions about the Maker X, about what we're celebrating uh, this year for Halloween, about what we're dressing up as, any uh, more tips or tricks about the Maker yeah, X, anything. about the skull, let us know before we sign off and go. Again, you can find this video on Michael's, um, excuse me, on YouTube with on Michael's channel. It's so much information. I know. It's You're so much right, information. Right. Um, with um, in about 48 hours, yeah. I think Felicia said, and um, use the hashtag make it with Michael's. Yeah. Check out michaels.com for all of the Maker X tools. It is a total game changer and the perfect Christmas gift for this season. You know, and they're saying shop early, get yes, your stuff early. Yes, yes, yes. So now would be a great time to jump online and purchase these because seriously, they are a game changer. They really are. This was what so is the fun. material of the skull? The, oh. It's like a plastic. Yeah, this is just one of those plastic skulls. They're so inexpensive. They're all like Michaels has so many of them. Um, and they're really great. They're really great. Uh, you take them and create so many things off of them. Yes, we actually use them in our wreaths, in our, yeah. in our garland here. We made this little coffin guy a few years ago. You know, we're constantly, anytime we see any Halloween things at Michael's, we pick them up whenever we go because we know they're going to go. Yes. And they it, fly off the shelf. I was going to say, speaking of like a skeleton, using the airbrush on a full skeleton would be so cool. I mean, just like- Oh, yes. Uh, Max said, tell about your poison jar, which oh, is right up here, which is- one? Yes, this is another one we made with our Maker X. It's a poison jar, uh, you know, kind of similar thing. We did the airbrushing with the label. So we cut out the label on our Cricut Maker and then airbrushed it. And we glued the skull with um, the hot glue gun. And it, I mean, it, it, looks, it looks really great on camera. It looks really great in person. Yeah, so it's, I mean, we're constantly creating, we're constantly making things, Yeah. Um, you know, and we're not really big on, you know, we don't like to have a lot of stuff. We like to repurpose and reuse a lot of stuff. And with these tools, it makes it so easy to just make pretty much anything. Whatever, if you're a hobbyist, a, um, you know, if you do this an Etsy seller. Yes, I mean, know. these tools are really, really great. Oh yes, Meg, Meg just shared the instructions, the tutorial of how Thank to make that jar. Yes, baby skulls, Halloween cupcakes. Yes, we did Halloween cupcakes with our food safe airbrush. So fun. We didn't make them, but we the just galaxy got pumpkin. Them. Yeah, well, we well, we, them. we already decorated them. them. Yeah, um, but um, can you post the links for Maker X, Carl B? Yeah, the rotary one. Yeah, yes, Meg can definitely. Add yes, those we'll links. wait for you to send that link yeah, before, before we sign, we sign up off here. But again. Follow us, Crafty Lumberjacks, across all social media, Instagram, TikTok. We're even on Twitter. We're still doing the <laughs> tweeting. Uh, yeah, if you love Halloween content, Christmas content, we're, we're about to start working more on Christmas. We actually started 
in July, like many of <laughs> yes. you. Uh, but follow us for all that inspiration. Follow Works Tools. They have so many different makers on their platforms. And of course, follow Michaels too. They're another uh, company that are just always pulling from makers that uh, I'm, I'm always finding inspiration from yes. both of them. And be sure to join us for our next class on November 19th. We're going to be making our little wood round snowman. Oh, he's, he's really so, so cute, cute using the Maker X. And we hope to see you then. Have an incredibly safe and happy Halloween. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.